Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello. It's a happy day. If you need to make sure that you're not going to fall asleep when Pastor Tom is preaching, stand up and sing with us. We're going to do a happy day. <laughs>
Do you know what we're celebrating this week? Can you guess? Can you guess what we're celebrating this week? Pretty smart, aren't you? I even have my St. Patty's socks on and all my stuff here. You know, my last name is McElvena. Do you think that's Irish? <laughs> no. I know you thought I was Polish, didn't you? Yes. Well, that's Irish, and every year I love celebrating St. Patty's Day. I even have Kermit with me, who's green, as you can see. And with my green stuff here, I have on I have my green earrings and the whole bit there. I know it's a few days early, but you have to really get into the mood for it, don't you? Are you going to wear, are you going to wear green on Thursday? Yes. Yes, yes. Do you know what it means when you wear green? <gasps> How that started? Do you believe in leprechauns? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're the little fairy creatures that go around. Well, you know what? Leprechauns love to pinch people all the time. And if you wear green, it's believed if you wear green, the leprechaun cannot see you. You become invisible. And if he can't see you, you don't get pinched. So be sure you wear green on Thursday, okay? And things that are invisible, we don't see Jesus, but we know that he's with us every day, and he would never pinch us, would he? No, I know that. But he loves us each and every day. And it's such, it's such a warm feeling to know that when we go out, out into this world, that he's there with us. And we don't have to worry about him like we do the leprechaun. I have the little Irish blessing I want to share with you. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your field, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. So always remember that, that he's always with you and watching out for you. And be careful of those leprechauns. Thank you for joining me today. Okay, good, good. Um, as you might know, the spaghetti dinner was canceled this afternoon. So when service is over, you just get a snack. You don't get spaghetti. <laughs> it's going to be rescheduled, but at this point, we don't know uh, the exact date. Um, Wednesday, there's going to uh, be a new Bible study at 10 to 11 at Salem and 6 to 7 here at Church of Four Seasons. And on the 23rd, it will be changed to the 24th. There's just a one minor day that can't be taken care of. Um, there's prayer request cards on the back of the chairs. Fill them out if you have a request. And then I will pick them up after the offering and give them to pastor to read. They're on the back of the chairs and also on the table in the back. Um, the, uh, there's another uh, collection of food for the uh, Winfield Pantry. The basket is in the Agape Center. Uh, after service, I, I already said this, join us for a snack in the Agape Center. Uh, Morning Star returns Tuesday, April 5th at 9.30. Church Council meets Tuesday at 6.30. Everyone is welcome to attend and encouraged to attend. And, and if you saw the bulletin, um, we have listed the financial report, and we're going to try and do this every month so that you know where you're, um, what we're doing with your offering. And um, this is something that we're going to try and see if people 
um, are pleased with this reporting. So let us know how you feel about that. And that's all I have today. Nothing else. Have a good day. Not to worry. Well, interestingly enough, you know, when Linda said she did not have much to say today, I broke out in another chorus of, oh, happy day. <laughs> now today, just so you know that um, our reader today is Jane Wright, but Jane's maiden name is Clark. So you have the full, and we all, on, on this day, all Clarks are Irish. Whether that's true or not, we don't care. We're just all Irish, right, Jane? Absolutely. Now, in my family, my Uncle Bob, who, who passed away just, just last year, but he was a family historian. Now, most of the family history he would make up. And he told us this story about how my, my great-great-grandmother came from Ireland. And according to the story, she came over on this, on this uh, ocean liner from Ireland to New York to become a maid for a very wealthy couple in New York. On the ship over, she met this wealthy Englishman, and they got married, and that's how the family came together. But ultimately, I figured out he made that up because that was the plot of the Titanic. <laughs> But we are fortunate today, we're joined by Reverend Paul Arnold, who is our Associate Conference Superintendent, and his wife, Joanne. So we welcome you. Many of you know Paul. Um, I have actually known Paul for almost 30 years. Uh, I worked with Joanne when we worked together at Calumet College, so please don't share anything with anyone, Joanne, <laughs> about our time together, all right? You're sworn to secrecy. No, I just saw, they are, they are true friends and great mentors, and I'm just blessed to call them friends and colleagues in, in ministry. And so I know, I know, Paul, you're very familiar with Church of the Four Seasons, and so we are, we are glad you, you are here. Um, one of the things that is going to happen today, we're talking about God's vocabulary. And God's vocabulary is never spoken in words. God's vocabulary speaks to the heart. So when we are asking ourselves in the midst of a world at war, in the midst of family with suffering and problems and issues, we ask ourselves, how is God speaking to us now? And God is speaking to us in our hearts and in the silence of our hearts. Because as we have walked through these doors today, there are many burdens in our lives. There are many things that we just don't understand. There are many things that make it hard for us to really say, I'm at peace. But you know what? We can be at peace because God's peace lives with each one of you. God's peace lives with you in a way more intimate than anything you have ever, ever known. So before we begin today, let us meet and greet each other with a sign of that peace. And let's do that in a hearty fashion today. We actually can get up and move around and, and shake one another's hands. Please, people. Why do I feel like I'm totally out of control?
I don't know why it is, I don't know why it is the day my associate conference superintendent arrives on the scene, no one seems to be listening to me this morning. What? What? Are you talking? As we gather and prepare to celebrate God's love, I think it's very important that we spend just a moment in prayer. And you know, during this song, the collection will be taken. So let us pray. Living God, you are a God of abiding hope and eternal grace. We rejoice that we have come together today to, to praise your holy name, to be the body of your Son, to be the church proclaiming justice and hope to a very troubled world. Strengthen us as we worship today. May all that we do and all that we say be pleasing unto you. We pray for your blessing upon this service and for those watching this service at home. Unite us, guide us, strengthen us. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. See the King of Glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sins. Good morning again. It is nice to see all of you here, gathered here this morning, and we have some uh, old friends who are with us today. Welcome back, Barb and Car Carmen. They are, uh, what, you didn't like Florida, just decided to come home. <laughs> or were you asked to leave? <laughs> now we welcome John Damare is back with us this morning. John, always good to see you. Great, welcome, welcome back. We uh, always like to see our folks come back, especially those who've been gone for, for the winter. 
all of you guys do know winter seems to still be going on here. Yeah. We welcome you back and we're glad to see some new faces here this morning. You know, this is the time in the service when we lift up to God those things that are heavy on our hearts, those things that, that trouble us, and also those times of great joy. We know that God is with us every moment, right? There's never a moment we're separated from God. But there are those times when God's love is revealed in a very, very special way. And we do have some very special prayer requests this morning. Uh, first of all, is there anyone who has a prayer request that did not get to fill out a prayer card? Yes, Cheryl. Canceled is because I dealt with COVID last week. And Linda and I were going to do all the food and everything. And I didn't think you'd really want me doing your food. <laughs> but I am negative now. I just I got retested, and I am negative now. But sorry for that. No lunch, unless Linda's buying. <laughs> <laughs> One little thing like a COVID diagnosis, and there goes the spaghetti dinner. <laughs> sorry. No, Cheryl has defeated a number of <laughs> yeah. things this year. And uh, she's, uh, I don't know how many of you saw her Facebook post, but she's a warrior. <laughs> Three and oh. And uh, I'm very, very pleased that she's with us. So, and we will have the spaghetti dinner. Yes, Gloria. Okay, we're going to pray for, pray for Dan. We have a, him on our prayer list, without a doubt. We'll pray for him. All right, anyone else this morning? If not, we have those people who have come forward asking for prayers today. And we want to continue in our prayers for John Penrod, for, for Diane Clark. Uh, Diane's husband, Jim, is actually a missionary to Ukraine and is keeping us informed as to what's happening for the Ukrainian people. And we're going to lift them up in prayer today in a very, very special, very special way. Lori Campos, who's continuing to recover. Bob McCartney, who is in symphony and is, is doing much better, getting his strength back. Cecil Hempenius, who's still undergoing treatment. We lift Cecil up in a very special way. Diane Hall uh, will be having surgery. And sometime this week, we're waiting for a specific date on that. Uh, we continue to pray for John Nadalski, Brad Schulte, Kaylee, Louise Mays, Jeff Maiden, our brother and sister Barb and Paul DiPaolo. We want to keep and hold them just in our hearts and in our prayers. Arnie Anderson and Bob and Cynthia Young, who are traveling this week. Uh, Deanna Harbor, uh, who will be having surgery now on what, the 21st, correct? We're going to keep her in our prayers. Uh, David and Joyce Stonehouse, of course. And Dan Pacini, who is Gloria, who Gloria talked about. Now, we have heard many of these names read before. And you know, what we say in our tradition as United Methodists, we do not simply believe that prayer is a spoken word. We believe that prayer is a spoken word and action. That's fundamental to what we believe as Wesleyans. And so now, as we go to a time of silent prayer, what I would ask you to do is open your hearts to God's wisdom. How is God asking you to respond to these needs? And these are people that all of you know, some of you know better than others. But God will give you a way to respond. God will give you a way to make that prayer a way you reveal God's love as God reveals God's love through you. So let us now center ourselves in the presence of God and open our hearts to God's wisdom as we hear these needs of this family. We want to, as well, remember today um, Brian, uh, who Jackie Laudermilk has asked for prayers. He's undergoing treatment. 
We'll hold Brian in our continuing prayers. And also, um, Carmen's brother, Brian, uh, who is undergoing treatment as well, and we want to pray for his continuing recovery and his strength. So let us gather all of these needs together now, and let us join together as we lift them up in prayer. Holy and loving God, we have come to you today as your people. We have lifted up to you those who are suffering physically. We've lifted up to you those who are dealing with cancer. We have lifted up to you those who are caregivers, those who are anticipating surgery. We pray that in your healing presence, you will grant strength beyond each of our capacity, beyond the capacity of those for whom we pray today. We pray that in your healing presence, you will grant hope not born of circumstance. We pray for caregivers to be guided by your wisdom of wholeness and of healing. And we pray that the compassion that we can express to those in need, those who suffer, will reflect the compassion you revealed in your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now we join all of those prayers together, for they're born of human circumstance, are they not? They're born of what we deal with each and every day. They're born of our own illnesses, our own worries, our own fears, our own doubts. We put them together in the perfect prayer that our Lord and Savior gave us. And I would ask us just to join hands if we're comfortable doing that. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to go into a deep worship song so we're ready to receive Pastor Tom's message. He's going to be speaking about anointing today. If you don't know what that is, look at the words to this song. Listen to the message.
wish. Now hear the words of Luke 4, verses 16 through 21. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue, as he normally did, and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled, just as you heard it. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Now, I know this is a fairly unusual reading to do at this time in Lent, but there's a reason that I decided to use this gospel text today. What some of you may or may not know is actually I started my journey to ministry almost 40 years ago. I had trouble finding a parking place at seminary, so it took me a little longer than anticipated. But the very first sermon I preached in a United Methodist Church was in a United Methodist Church in my hometown. And I'm not, trust me, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus, okay? But I preached on October the 17th, 1988, in my hometown, United Methodist Church. I was filling in for the pastor that day, and I will tell you this. I hope no one remembers that sermon, okay? I would have left in the middle had I not been preaching. That's how bad it was. In fact, there is a picture of me preaching in that Methodist church that I want all of you to make a solemn pledge. Cheryl will never get her hands on. It'll never be seen anywhere. I actually weighed 125 pounds my mustache weighed more than I did at the time. <laughs> and I, I, I looked at that picture the other day, and it happened to be, Barb reminded me when she did the children's message today. I was, I was standing, getting ready to preach, and they were doing the children's message. And I thought, oh my gosh, all of the people hearing the children's message are now like retired. <laughs> you know? But it ages you. My point is, that sometimes we find ourselves in confusing situations with God, don't we? I never thought that I would ever make it to be your pastor. I never thought I would never preach in this church again. I never thought that I would actually be able to say that I can provide pastoral care. Never thought that would happen. Never thought that would happen at all. But yet, the message is not about me. That's not the message I want you to hear today. Whether or not I was the world's worst preacher, you know, 34 years ago, whether or not I just didn't seem to be cut out for ministry at that time, because it's hard to look out at a congregation and see people that knew you when you were growing up. That's a scary thought. I remember my old gym teacher was in the congregation that day. The man could not stand me. He's the guy, remember, he had to climb the rope to the top of the, you know, and he would say, you know, I could just, I thought, I said, you know, I, was, I felt like going out and saying him, you know, you know, I was almost going to become a United Methodist pastor, but you know, I got to the board of ordained ministry and they said, go climb that rope to the ceiling, <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. But the factor is that God speaks to us in many different ways. And today we heard Jesus talk from the prophet Isaiah and the great prophets talking about justice and equity among people. And anointing was something that was done for the prophets. 
Among the Israelites, the prophets were anointed to preach God's word. And what was God's word about? It was about the way we relate to one another, wasn't it? And it's about the way we relate to God. Prophets were anointed. The priests were anointed. And the kings were anointed. Remember King David, the least likely to become king. The least likely of Jesse's sons to become king, but he was anointed. And so when we talk about anointing, if I were to ask you, and there's no need to, to shout out, but if I were to ask you, what, what's anointing? What do you think you would say? Is it me walking up and putting olive oil on your head when you're sick or suffering? Is that what anointing is? Yes, it could be. That's a symbol and a sign. But what is anointing when we talk about it as being anointed to be part of God's kingdom? What is anointing when we talk about what it means to be set apart to do God's work in this world? What does it mean when we talk about being anointed to reveal God's love to the world? You know, the true definition of anointing is to be set apart. It's to be set apart. We are set apart as the body of Christ to reveal God's justice to this world. We are set apart as the body of Christ to reveal God's love to this world. We are set apart as the body of Christ to be the vehicle through which Christ is present in the world. That is the church. To be anointed means to be set apart, to be called. And when we anoint with oil, we're really saying three things, three very important things. We are saying that we are being set apart. We belong to God. We belong to God in a real and in a special way. But we just don't belong to God by ourselves. We belong to God with God's strength. So not only are we set apart to be a people of God's justice and God's mission, we are set apart and we are empowered to do that. We don't do it alone. Do you really believe that we could be the vehicle through which Christ is present to the world by our own power, by our own means, by our own strength? by our own capacity? Of course not. So we are empowered to be the body of Christ. Now it's interesting, what does that really mean? We see a world at war right now, don't we? We see racism. You know, our conference is committed to dismantling racism. That is our challenge. We see brokenness in cities among people. You heard all the suffering that we are dealing with, even in our family here at Church of the Four Seasons. So what does it mean to be the body of Christ, to be anointed as the body of Christ? What did the prophet Isaiah say that Jesus read when he preached in his hometown? To bring good news to the poor. Are we bringing good news to the poor in what we do and how we live and how we serve and how we worship and how we care? Are we really? Are we bringing good news to the poor? And we're not simply talking about involuntary poverty. We're talking about people who can be poor in many, many ways. And are we bringing good news to the poor? Are we helping those who are spiritually blind? Are we giving sight to them? Are we really doing that as the church of Jesus Christ? Are we helping people experience Jesus Christ as real and in, in their life? As Jesus Christ is real in each of our lives, are we doing that? Are we setting the prisoners free? There are lots of ways to be imprisoned that don't involve a jail cell. Lots of ways. Are we setting the prisoners free? If we are not doing those things, then we are not being the body of Christ to the world. If we are not doing those things, then we cannot honestly say we feel anointed. 
we feel called. Because when we make the sign of the cross with that oil, when we make that sign of the cross, I always tell people, you know, this symbolizes three things. And we can, as the Church of Jesus Christ, say we are now feeling that, that call, that anointing on all of us. I tell them, first of all, this is a sign of God's presence in your life. And it's a sign of God's presence in this community. God is present here in a real way. And secondly, it is a sign of God's strength in your life. We don't walk it alone. And finally, it is a sign of God's providential care in your life, meaning you're never abandoned. You see, my friends, we are on a very sacred mission. We are on a very, very sacred and special mission to be the body of Christ. But we're not on that mission without God's strength through God's spirit. We're not on that mission without God's capacity in our lives that's well beyond our own. We have to remember that each and every step. Now, it's interesting, during this season of Lent, we talk about two kinds of anointing. Ash Wednesday, you were anointed in a different way. You were anointed with ashes, the sign of our dependence on God, the sign of our mortality, the sign of the fact that our total dependence is on God, our total hope is in God through Jesus Christ, the sign of our mortality, the sign of nature. When we are we talk about being anointed by God. We're talking about a sign of God's grace. Now, isn't it miraculous how the two come together? That in our acknowledgement of our dependence on God, we are open to God's grace. In our acknowledgement of our mortality, we are open to God's immortality. And in our acknowledgement of our trust in God, our only trust we have that's certain, we are called to reveal God's love to the world. And so now, as we close today, I'm going to ask you to do something, and no, I'm not going to anoint this morning, but I'm going to ask you to do something just a little different. Right now, right now there's something in your life, there's someone in your life, there's a situation in your life that needs to know the presence of Jesus Christ that needs to know God's love. And after we, we do this small exercise, then I'm going to have us join in a prayer for the people of Ukraine, which is another example of how we are called to be present, to be the body of Christ. But now I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes. Just close your eyes for a few moments. And as you close your eyes, I'm going to ask you to visualize a situation in your life, a situation where you can reach out and touch someone where God's love needs to be revealed, where perhaps this person is a victim of injustice based on, based on their race, based on their ethnicity. That's not right. That's not God's way. Think about that image. Perhaps this is someone who is suffering involuntary poverty and needs to know that they are welcome. Keep that image in your mind and let us pray. Holy and loving God, right now this community is gathered and we're centering ourselves in your call on our hearts, your anointing on our hearts by your spirit to reveal your love to people. And in each of, these, each of these situations that now our people are holding in our hearts, open us to your wisdom. Open us to what you would have us do. Open us to what act of compassion, what act of love, what act of advocacy is needed now. Open us to that. Challenge us, if you will. Break us out of our mold. Break us out of our nature. Empower us with your grace so that your love will be revealed and so that we can joyfully say we are the body of your Son and your love is revealed. Amen. Now, I would ask us on this day, I thought it appropriate that as we close our message today about being the body of Christ, that we say a very special prayer for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, 
and for our brothers and sisters in Russia who are innocent victims in this war. You know, we often are asked as pastors why God permits war, and perhaps God will ask us that same question someday. Why did you permit war? Why did you permit hostility? And what can you do to heal? And I said last week, and I said it again, and something Cheryl reminded me of this week, and it's very true. We look at the devastation in Ukraine, but don't we see the hand of God at work? Don't we see God's hand at work? Major refugee crisis, and yet we see people dropping, dropping political boundaries and welcoming people. Don't we see God's hand at work in acts of generosity and compassion and acts of hope? And so now I would like us just to join in prayer, and once again, let's join hands as we do this. Holy God, today our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and our brothers and sisters in Russia are suffering the devastation of war. We know that you are not the author of war, but you are the author of hope. May the church of your son unite in acts of compassion, in prayers lifted, in hope given, and may your healing presence be upon the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia granting them peace, causing wisdom as they go forward. And may we see with eyes wide open how different war is from what you call us to be, how different hate-fueled action is of where you call us to speak, but cause us truly to see how you are at work. Open our hearts to what we can do. Open our hearts to how we can serve and open our lives to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God gives you permission to worship however you want. And if that means standing to sing, Feel free to stand. If that means staying seated and looking at the words and letting them fall into your heart, embrace those words and remain seated. There's no right and wrong when it comes to worship. You just have to have an open heart and receive them. Partway through this song today, if it touches you and you can't sit any longer, it's really hard for me to sit, <laughs> um, go ahead and join us and stand up. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move. 
He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of hope of the risen King. Amen. Amen. Is that a volunteer? I thought so. Today we need to remember that as we go forth, we serve a God who can move mountains. So let us go in peace as the people of our Lord and Savior, and let us shine that light in the world. Go in peace. to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave you can move the mountains right now <laughs> Savior he can move the mountains my God is mighty to save, he is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, he is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Amen. Have a blessed week.